What's up, guys? This is week one of a brand new series podcast we are doing at The Crossing Students called Continued Conversations, The Race. So because it's week one, let me explain a little bit about what's going on. So we have a Wednesday night service for 6th through 12th graders that happens every Wednesday in Las Vegas at The Crossing Church. And this is essentially a continued conversation, the next step in conversations about things we've already talked about. So each week we are going to be talking about the race and some ways that we really live out our Christian life. There's a verse that Paul writes in 2 Timothy uh, 4.7 that says, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. So we want to be able to say as Christians when we get to the end uh, end of our lives, we want to say, I've kept the faith, I've finished the race. So throughout these next five weeks, we're going to be talking about five different things that play into that of being a Christ follower. So this is the first one of those. We're going to be talking about this idea of gathering purposefully. Why do we gather? Why do we do that? But throughout this series, we're going to talk about things like giving, serving, connecting, and influencing. So um, keep checking back for those. These will come out on the Thursday after our Wednesday night program. Um, And I'm, I'm going to be your host for all five. But every week, I'm going to have two different students talking about those topics so you can hear from teachers teenagers from students just like you probably watching um, kind of explaining where they're at with these topics what has helped them what could maybe help you with some of these things so without further ado I want to introduce our two people that we have today we have Bella Gazzini Gazzini I don't I never remember which one it is but this is Bella everybody she has been on our podcast before shout out to aliens Um, she got to talk about aliens she rolled her eyes she (laughs) rolled her eyes man Um, so Bella is here Bella tell us what grade you are in and um, how long you've been coming to the crossing students I'm in 11th grade and I've been coming since I was in seventh grade seventh grade that would have been what were you in the theater at the time? We were split middle school and high school. It was still mm-hmm. fusion, wasn't it? It was still fusion, but we were in the auditorium. But we were in the auditorium. Yeah, I okay. think your wife was fusion, my leader. Fusion, man. Yeah, my wife did lead you. Oh, yep. my gosh. Shout out to my wife. Hey, Kaylee. I know you're going to listen or watch. <laughs> Kaylee, Kaylee Brazil. There's so many Kayleys around the crossing. It's crazy. Um, but anyway, my wife was your leader. That's super cool. So we also have Isabella. Can I say your middle name on air? Middle name, sure. Isabella Jocelyn. Leave it Shoot. at that. I know your last <laughs> nope, name. Just leave it oh at my that. gosh, I know her real last name, but I can't think of it right now. It's Trey, not burnt. Shut your mouth. It's not burnt. <laughs> you have a different last name. That's a lie, isn't it? That's not. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna get y'all <laughs> her real last, last name. name. <laughs> anyway, Izzy, so glad to have you on this. Um, <laughs> Izzy, tell okay. us what grade are you in, and how long have you been coming to the crossing? The exact same as Bella. I'm in 11th grade, and I've been here since seventh grade. But we were in the theater since seventh grade. Wow, that is crazy. That is nuts. Y'all have been around for a while. Y'all have been around since the fusion days. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, today we're talking about gathering purposefully. We're talking about why do we gather as Christians. But I want to open this up just to kind of give an icebreaker. Um, So I want to ask you guys this. What is the best concert or sporting event that you guys have been to? Um, I'll I'll, I'll, go. You want to go? No, you can go. You go. You go. You go. You go. go. This is going to be a real long podcast if they just do that the whole time. (laughs) Just kidding. (laughs) Bella, go for it. Okay. The best one I've been to is Maverick City Music. I loved their concert. Like, it was crazy because worship is, like, one of my favorite, like, types of music. And so, for me, like, it was just insane to see it live and in person and, like, to see all these other people, like, worshiping at the same time. I don't know. It was, like, worship at the crossing on steroids. Like, that's the best way to explain it. I would love to go see Maverick City. Like, they are, they're strong. That's cool. That's really good. Was that, uh, did they have anybody else with them or was it just Maverick? It was Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin. Y'all went with Kirk Franklin. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. Yeah. Kirk Franklin was around when I was growing up. Really? He is. He's been around. He's definitely hype for sure. He's He's, uh, He got some moves. He's got some moves. All right. Izzy, best concert or sporting event that you've ever been to? Um, I've never been to a sporting event or concert. I went to, uh, uh, my high school went to playoffs for football last year. And that was at the Allegiant Stadium. Oh That's my gosh, they I'm played at Allegiant? Mm-hmm. What high school do you go to? Shadow Ridge High School. <laughs> Shadow Ridge played at Allegiant? What the heck is this, man? That's crazy. That's so cool. So um, talk to me about that. Was the stadium packed? Like, I mean, I bet you probably not 70,000 people. Yeah, no, but it wasn't that full. I bet you what was, why was that such a cool environment for you? Um, I don't know. Just because it's the Allegiant Stadium, I guess it's not a normal football field. So and it's inside, which is nice. And it's inside. You're not, not sitting in the heat, outside. In the Vegas heat, man. Uh, but I think real. they're, 
I think there's probably something cool about that that kind of goes to the Maverick City thing too of like both of those places you guys are there for like a specific purpose like you all have that in common yeah um, and that's actually what I actually talked about last night uh, during the message was the idea of like we gather around people that are there for the same reason for us right like mm-hmm. we gather at church because it's church and we as Christ followers go to church to be around other church goers yeah. we go to concerts to be able to sing maverick city songs with other maverick city listeners yeah. we go to jonas brothers concerts because i can go sing out the jonas brothers songs with other other people mostly girls some dudes that are dragged <laughs> there by their spouses but i'm a real fan shout out to you guys nick joe and kevin um <laughs> but we go there because we want to sing those songs you go to the football game when you guys are playing at allegiant in the playoffs because you want to support your school you want to be around other people who are also there to support the school so um i love that i love that a lot so talk to me about this let's talk about tcs wednesdays specifically what is your guys's favorite part of the night and why um I think definitely the message I just love like hearing the message and then going and talking about it in small groups and then also like hearing how like the girls weeks are like like they're my friends and so like it's really awesome to be able to just catch up with them especially since we don't go to the same school typically um and so just catching up with them and seeing how they're doing is a really amazing part of TCS that's good so you like the message you like being able to connect in small groups and have conversations around those things yes um super cool Week two, we're talking about connecting deeply. So we're going to dive into a little bit of that small group stuff next week. So I'm excited for Mm -hmm. that. But Izzy, um, for you, what is your favorite part about Wednesdays? Uh, Worship in small groups. I like Mm -hmm. worship because that's when I feel the most connected with God. Because I feel like that's like I hear the message and then I'm able to like, I don't know. I just feel more connected during worship and everything. That's good. Do you feel like um, do you feel like you don't feel that connected when you're just listening to worship music at home or when you're um, in other places listening to worship music? Yeah, I would say, I would say I'm still connected, but definitely not as much. Cause like if, I don't know, I mean me personally, I'm not going to other people might, but I'm not going to go like, if I'm in the middle of the store, I'm not just going to start like going crazy. Like I would for worship and stuff. So I feel like that's the place where you feel most connected. Cause you can, I don't know, not just stand there and listen to it. But you're also kind of, bumping and rubbing shoulders with other people who are worshiping with Mm -hmm. you as well so i think that's a that's a big piece of it too um i I would ask you the same question so do you feel like you get the same thing when you just like if you just threw on a message that was in podcast form or you were just listening to it at home do you feel like that's the same as opposed to when you're sitting in the seats on a wednesday i think it's like the atmosphere definitely changes because now you're there with people and like for example like those continued conversations that happen afterward those are like always the best because it's like even on Sundays like if I'm here with my dad afterward when we go to the car I'm like dad so what do you think about the message so it leads to those connections that like that are so important you know that God wants us to be there with and of course messages online are amazing and we do those too but I definitely think it makes a difference when you're there in person and live hearing it because I think a big piece of that is for you with the messages and what you like most about it is the connection to the people after the fact. Mm-hmm. It's not just, oh, well, I listened to that message, so shut my laptop, let me go just do the dishes. Like, that's not that's not what you want. When you hear a message and when you're connecting with God or when you're worshiping, it's not, oh, well, um, I'm just going to throw this on at home and then go fold my laundry. Like, for you guys, the way you feel connected in that way is because of a little bit of because of the people around you and, and gathering with those people. Um, so what, let me ask you this then, what is the point of having a gathering? Like just in general, what is the point of having a gathering? What's the point of having a church gathering? Okay. Okay. So I think the point is like, because God created us for it, honestly, like in my opinion, I really think that if we look back, like he created, um, Adam or Eve for Adam, right? So we shouldn't be alone either. Like if that's how God has set the standard is like, Hey, you're meant to be with people in life. And like, I think also when we're around people, we are getting connected and we are growing a deeper love and a deeper bond with those people through Christ. And I think like, that's a big reason why gathering is so important is because it not only grows your relationship with God, just setting aside time every day or every like Wednesday or Sunday to be in his presence, right? To hear the message from Pastor Shane or Pastor Lee or whoever's speaking that day, right? And it's also like when you're doing those things, you're going to be connected to the, like you said, like the people around you. And I think like that's how God intended for us to live is connected, you know? 
So that's why gathering support. That's good. I, I'm guessing you would probably agree. Yeah, Izzy, I was going to say that. the same thing. Um, so let me ask you this. Are, can you pinpoint any times in your past or um, any seasons or instances that you've had that you felt like the people around you at that gathering really picked you up and provided that like need for community? Um, I'd say summer camp, especially CIY last, or this year. Yeah. So talk about that. What? Why was CIY so important to you? Why was that so big for you? Um, I mean, you seclude yourself for a week on a college campus because we went to Biola, um, CIY. Um, why, why was that important? Why was that effective? Yeah. Um, I'd say it's effective just because you're... I don't know. It's easier to like get connected because you have people that are there for the same reasons because they want to get closer to God and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot easier to do it when you all have the same mindset whether than because I mean, you could say some people here like they just come just because they're bored and they don't like they just don't want to be home. But people there, they're spending their money to go. So they obviously want to be there. So it's one that hits a little bit of the idea. I mean, this week is kind of called gather purposefully. So it's like the idea of there's a reason and a purpose behind what you're doing. And there's a reason and a purpose behind um, how you're gathering, essentially. So um, let me ask you guys this. And this might take us to the end. It might not. Um, I'm sure this is going to stir up some more conversation. So um, how should teenagers specifically, because you guys are, you're both juniors. So you're what, 16, 17 um, years old. How should teenagers or people your age rethink or shift their view of what coming to church means because a lot of us we can just come to church and check a box like oh god wants me to go to church check or my parents are sending me on a wednesday check but i think there's it's deeper than that it's more than that so how do we shift the way we think when it comes to that um i think (laughs) i think honestly it's kind of also first like i want to take like a little bit of a different route that's okay I think it's important to remember when you come to church that these people aren't perfect. You know, like we're all just broken people trying to love a perfect God. And I think when we realize like we detach the way people at church sometimes treat us versus how God treats us. And it's not to say that um, us as Christians are never going to strive to be like Christ because I think that's what he asks us to do is to live like him. But we're never going to hit that mark perfectly because we're not Jesus and so I think it's also like kind of shifting our perspective from you know church equals these perfect people and this perfect life so I'm never going to fit in so I should never even go versus hey let me check this out let me see what this is about because I guarantee you you coming to church especially like a place like the crossing at least for me was a place that I never have felt judged I can come to this place and there are girls and you know guys oftentimes who have struggled with what I'm struggling with and nine times out of ten have done what I've done and can relate to me and can understand and want to love me where I'm at instead of you know feeling that loneliness that we're not supposed to feel especially as teenagers like this is the one of the most vulnerable times in our lives that we should be connected to people and I think church is an awesome place that provides that that's I think that's really good because that's helping shift the view of people who are watching this maybe that have never been to church and don't plan to because of maybe things they've heard about church or uh, other experiences people have had i think that's helping people shift the view of like oh it's it's not just i have to love god in order to go Mm. it's a place where i can find community and people that care about me and will love me and won't judge me yeah so i think that's really good that's a that's a great way for people to shift their mind even before they step through the door right yeah so let me ask you this though the kid who's been coming you guys have both said you've been coming since seventh grade another person who's been coming since seventh grade it's just it's just another wednesday night for them what needs to shift when it comes to their thoughts on it I have a little bit something controversial, I think I'm going to say. Ooh, hot takes. Hot takes. Here take. they come. I think Wednesdays and Sundays should not be the only time that you really get to know God. If it is, then, you know, it's like there was this uh, quote I'd heard that's like, if you only eat once a week, you're going to starve. And the same applies when reading scripture and like being with Jesus. Like being in like coming to church, it's amazing and it is such a beautiful place to gather with people. But I also think like, that you can't let that be your source of fulfillment. And if you are, it's only going to ever be a Wednesday. But if you allow it to be an addition to your relationship with God that you've built on 
his word and on spending time with him in prayer, you know, it's really that that becomes then what it's supposed to be an addition, not the foundation of your faith. Hmm, That's good. It's a piece of your relationship with God. It is not the full part of your relationship with God. Yeah, that's good. I like that. So shifting that a little bit of like, it's a day to day thing. It's not a Wednesday to a Wednesday thing. Yes. Exactly. It's not like, well, Wednesday. So I got to check in with God. No, exactly. It's that's a daily walk. And on Wednesdays, it's just heightened because you have Wednesdays or because on Sunday you're coming to church. It's a little bit heightened yeah. in that sense. That's good. So Izzy, what do you think about that? So when you are, when you're driving to church on a Wednesday, I mean, y'all, y'all, you go to Shadow Ridge, y'all live like 45 minutes away. You're essentially over in Utah. Um, <laughs> not really, but for real, like you have a long drive over here. You have, you have to get here. That whole car ride, what are you thinking about? Like, what are you, ex- what, what excites you? Why, why is the reason you keep driving 45 minutes for a Wednesday night? Um, definitely the community. It's, mm, I don't know. Yeah, the community because I'm really close with a lot of the people because I've been going here since seventh grade. And then since I got like I was in SLT and Creative Collective. <laughs> creative Collective. <laughs> uh, coming back soon. <laughs> then I get to know I get to know more people. So it makes it I don't know. Again, community is nice. to The have. community is what makes it worth it. Community. Yep. That's good because I think. But I, but I also think I would challenge if that's where it stops, I think we're missing something from a Wednesday because I think, yes, the community aspect is there and yes, you get to see people. But I think there's this this thing about you are joining in such a larger picture than we really see. Like you're joining in the kingdom of God in that piece. Mm. So when we come on a Wednesday, we realize that like, oh, it's bigger than me. Yeah. It's bigger than us. And a lot of times our our personal worries will take over and that's okay because that's where the community comes in of like, you've had a bad day. You don't want to sit here and listen about God for 45 minutes. That's fine. But then once you get to small groups, you get to kind of just lay it out and let people pour into you. Yeah. Like I, I totally understand that because I know student after student who have had great days and they come to Wednesdays and then they have terrible days and they'll come to Wednesdays. But Wednesdays is the consistent because that's where it's growing deeper for them. It's bigger than just them. It's bigger than just their worries. It's bigger than all these things. Um, But I love that community piece of it because that's that is probably one of the biggest pulls for students on a Wednesday night Mm -hmm. because students are yearning for to be part of something bigger. They're yearning to be not just Bella or not just Izzy. Like Izzy wants to be part of Creative Collective and Creative Collective wants to be a part of the Crossing Students and the Crossing Students wants to be part of the Crossing Church. and The Crossing Church wants to be a part of God's kingdom and Mm -hmm. his mission here on earth. And it's something that's bigger than and it's outside of just me. And I think that's where the gathering is important and it's purposeful. There's a reason why we do that because we want to give students that place yeah. to gather and to connect. If you had, if you got to say one thing to a student who was like, ah, I don't really know if I should come on a Wednesday. Like, yeah, I'm watching online and I'm listening to the podcast. So they're listening to you right now, but they're like, ah, I don't know if I should come on a Wednesday. What would you say? Just do it. It's not the same online. Mm -hmm. It's so much better in person. I feel like the message is definitely, like the messages hit deeper. The worship is, I guess, deeper. It's different than you just dancing around in your PJs at home. Yeah, exactly. (sighs) Can't, like, I don't know. If you're watching it from home and then you're like, you could do worship with them, but it's not the same because it could just be, like, you could just be in your room watching it. So it's not the same as having a community around you because they're all there. Well, at least. Hopefully most of them are there because they want to get closer to God and everything. So definitely. That's good. I like that. Anything different you would say to somebody in that same boat? Um, I would just say like, honestly, come like, like literally just come because also like you'll get to meet so many people like from different walks of life that we're just all like, it's funny because it's like, you think like the church, there's like, you know maybe in your head you have like it's all white people that just want to do this that just want like that's what I've been told sometimes is like it's just all these white kids and and I and I see that because you know like the there's I'm not gonna get into that anyways I just I understand where people are coming from but I think once you come and you just try it out see for yourself 
how you like it, how you like the kids crossing, you know, or kids, how you like this crossing students. If you're a kid watching this, how you like kids <laughs> crossing too. How you, how you like the crossing students. Um, and I also think a huge part of the crossing students is the leaders. Like shout out Cody. I love you so much. Like she is one of the best leaders ever. And she like personally for, I can say from experience, like she always checks up on us. She sees how we're doing. And I think like maybe if you don't have that at home, like it's important to get that from someone else. And I think leaders here want to be that for students. And so that's really, really nice. It's another reason to gather, right? That's, that's a little bit of what, like if I can say it this way, that's a little bit of what my job is like to help provide and find those people to pour into students. These people that care about them, that want to be a part of it, that want to be another, or maybe the only cheerleader for you in your life. Like adults come in and out all the time, coaches, teachers, parents, even uh, family members, um, they're, they're in and out. But our goal is to provide a space where you have some adults pouring into you and loving on you and caring for you and cheerleading for you and want to make sure that you know that you're there for them. Another reason why you gather, right? Yeah. Because you have that person that you're coming to see. And even if you don't see them on a Wednesday and you got a bigger problem, you can purposefully gather with your group and with that leader outside of a Wednesday because they'll yeah. still be there for you. But it's, it's bigger than just Wednesday nights. We gather purposefully all throughout the year, whether it's in a small group at a home, whether it's in 200 to 300 kids on a Wednesday, or whether it's uh, 70,000 people going to see the Shadow Ridge High School game. Uh, we all gather for a reason. So our reason is we want you to feel loved and feel a part of something bigger. So um, I, I'm, my goal is to end each one of these with a challenge. So I want to challenge those of you listening. If you don't come consistently on Wednesdays, if you have never been on a Wednesday and you're a 6th through 12th grader in Las Vegas, we want to see you here at TCS Wednesdays, the Crossing Students Wednesdays. Come get plugged in. Give it a month. We always tell parents that. They're like, well, my kid went home. He didn't really like it, his first one. Well, yeah, he doesn't know anybody. Mm-hmm. Okay, he's not mm-hmm. going to like it. That's okay. But then when you come back week two, now that, now that girl that came, that, that junior girl that came, she knows Bella and she knows Izzy. Now she has somebody to talk to. And then she comes back the next week, she knows more people. She knows Cody. Then you yeah. come back again, you build this community and you start to know people, but it's going to take some time. So I would challenge you, if you're scared of that or you're worried about that, give it some time come see us come find bella come find izzy come find me on a wednesday night we'd love to get you connected and help you gather with us on wednesday night so um izzy bella thank you guys for both jumping into this it's been exciting it's been fun um shout out to shadow ridge for selling out allegiant (laughs) um and shout out to kirk franklin for also still bringing it even when he's like 60 years old i don't think he's 60 he's like 40 he's like 50 or 40 but anyway We love you guys. We'll be back with week two. Next week, we're going to be talking about connecting deeply. Um, Mm -hmm. So make sure you get here so we can talk all about small groups and why they're important. See you then. Deuces. Cut. (laughs) Ha ha.